I also learned the value of withholding judgment until I could make a decision based on evidence. I wondered how my research into the mathematical theory of a game might change my life. In the abstract, life is a mixture of chance and choice. Chance can be thought of as the cards you are dealt in life. Choice is how you play them. Do not assume that what investors call momentum, a long streak of either rising or falling prices, will continue unless you can make a sound case that it will. Let me be clear. I don't object to some people being richer, even much richer, than others. I object to gain of wealth through political connections rather than earning it by merit. Investing heavily in extremely favorable situations is characteristic of a Kelly better. For financial titans who aggressively continue to seek tens of millions, hundreds of millions, and sometimes billions, you can ask, is the winner really the one who dies with the most toys? How much is enough? When will you be done? Often the answer is never. Character is destiny. Las Vegas laid the foundation for a successful career in Wall Street. It taught me several important principles that I've employed for the past 25 years. It doesn't pay to push the other party to their absolute limit. A small extra gain is generally not worth the substantial risk the deal will break up. A trait that showed up at about this time was my tendency not to accept anything I was told until I had checked it for myself. When a maximizer goes shopping, looks for a handyman, buys gas, or plans a trip, he searches for the best possible deal time and effort. Don't matter much missing the very best deal leads to regret and stress on. The other hand, the satisfacer, so-called because he is satisfied, with a result that is close to the best, factors in the costs of searching and decision-making, as well as the risk of losing a near-optimal opportunity and perhaps never finding anything as good again. Mathematically, interruptions didn't matter because my lifetime of playing was just one long series of hands and chopping it into sessions and playing them at various times and in various casinos should not affect my edge nor the long-run amount. I could expect to win this principle applies in both gambling and investing. That acknowledgement, applause, and honor are welcome and add zest to life but they are not ends to be pursued. I felt then, as I do now, that what matters is what you do and how you do it, the quality of the time you spend, and the people you share it with. Neither Jerry nor I believe the efficient market theory I had overwhelming evidence of inefficiency from Blackjack, from the history of Warren Buffett and friends, and from our daily success in Princeton Newport Partners. We didn't ask, is the market efficient but rather, in what ways and to what extent is the market inefficient, and how can we exploit this? The fault is not in our markets, but in ourselves. Time is worth more to me than the extra money. I want to enjoy our children and their families, and to travel, read, and learn. Consider two investors, Sam Scared and Charlie Compounder. Suppose Sam Scared starts with $1, each time it doubles, he puts his $1 profit in a sock instead of reinvesting it. After 10 doublings, Sam has a profit in the sock of $1 times 10 plus his original $1 for a total of $11. Charlie also starts with $1 and makes the same investments but lets his profit ride. His $1 becomes $2, $4, $8, etc., until after 10 doublings he has $1,024. Sam's wealth grows as $1, $2, $3 to $11. This is called simple growth, arithmetic growth, or growth by addition. Charlie's increases as $1, $2, $4 to $1,024. This is known variously as compound, exponential, geometric, or multiplicative growth. Over a sufficiently long time, compound growth at a small rate will vastly exceed any rate of arithmetic growth, no matter how large. Success on Wall Street was getting the most money. Success for us was having the best life. The market can remain irrational longer than you can remain solvent. This plan, of betting only at a level at which I was emotionally comfortable and not advancing until I was ready, enabled me to play my system with a calm and disciplined accuracy. This lesson from the blackjack tables would prove invaluable throughout my investment lifetime as the stakes grew ever larger. With time, lucky managers tend to fade. The list of issues goes on, the point being that hedge fund investors don't have much protection and that the most important single thing to check before investing is the honesty, ethics, and character of the operators. 
Our corporate executives speculate with their shareholders' assets because they get big personal rewards when they win, and even if they lose, they are often bailed out with public funds by obedient politicians we privatize profit and socialize risk. What a person earns is determined not by what that person has produced but by that person's bargaining power. Why? Because production is typically carried out by teams, and the contribution of each member cannot be separated from that of the rest. The lessons we should have learned about excess leverage from the collapse of long-term capital management were ignored. Ten years later, history repeated on a worldwide scale when loose regulation and high leverage led to the near collapse of the entire financial system in 2008. As part of the overall meltdown, hedge fund assets fell from $2 trillion to $1.4 trillion from losses and withdrawal of capital. Those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Though the institutions of society have difficulty learning from history, individuals can do so. Write down everything you spend. The waste in your daily spending should soon become apparent. If you do this, what do you want to happen and if you do this, what do you think will happen? For the second time, the 10-count system had shown moderately heavy losses mixed with lucky streaks of the most dazzling brilliance I learned later that this was a characteristic of a random series of favorable bets, and I would see it again and again in real life in both the gambling and the investment worlds. This spread between replacement value and liquidation value may be high for real property, often as much as 10 to 20 percent. It's that way with houses, cars, art, and jewelry. In contrast, the cost to trade listed securities is typically only a small fraction of a percent, which, along with their liquidity, makes them more appealing stores of wealth. True success is exiting some rat race to modulate one's activities for peace of mind. Wealth, which I use synonymously with the accountant's term net worth, shows how rich you are now, whereas income measures how much money your wealth, labor, and ingenuity are currently generating. The fact that blackjack could be beaten led to an upsurge in play. Trade money for time by working less and buying goods and services that save time hire household help, a personal assistant, and pay other people to do things you don't want to do. Thousand dollar an hour New York professionals who pay fifty dollars an hour for a car and driver so they can work while they commute understand clearly the monetary value of their time. To get an idea of what your time is worth, take a moment now to think about how much you work and the income you get from your effort. Once you know your hourly rate you can identify situations where buying back some of your time is a bargain and other situations where you want to be selling more of your time. What appears random for one state of knowledge may not be if we are given more information future prices are not predictable, and no one can beat the market, but only when market, prices truly fluctuate randomly. The classic view of the correct price of a common stock is that it is derived from the value of all the future earnings. These earnings are uncertain and subject to unknowable factors. Could anyone have known beforehand how to allow for the impact of 9-11 on the future earnings? The big three for most investors are equities, interest rate securities, and real estate. Each accounts for about a quarter of the total net worth of U.S. households. In its simplest form, investors sell losing stocks before the end of the current year, realizing losses that reduce the year's income taxes. This behavior contributes to the so-called January effect where selling pressure in December further depresses the stock prices of the year's losers, followed by a rebound in excessive performance in January. Chose young smart people just out of university because they were not set in their ways from previous jobs. Better to teach a young athlete who comes fresh to his sport than to retrain one who has learned bad form. To beat the market, focus on investments well within your knowledge and ability to evaluate your circle of competence. Be sure your information is current, accurate, and essentially complete. Be aware that information flows down a food chain, with those who get it first eating and those who get it late being eaten. Don't bet on an investment unless you can demonstrate by logic, and if appropriate by track record, that you have an edge. Whether or not you try to beat the market, you can do better by properly managing your wealth. In order to attract and keep superior staff, I paid wages and bonuses well above the market rate. This actually saved money because my employees were far more productive than average. 
it's important that everyone work well together. As I was unable to tell from an interview how a new hire would mesh with our corporate culture, I told everyone that they were temporary for the first six months, as were we for them. Sometime during that period, if we mutually agreed, they would become regular employees. Portfolio insurance was designed to protect investors from large market declines. Ironically, the cure became the cause. The lesson of leverage is this, assume that the worst imaginable outcome will occur and ask whether you can tolerate it. If the answer is no, then reduce your borrowing. The bigger the edge, the larger the bet. The smaller the risk, the larger the bet. The less you risk, the less volatility you experience. The more you risk, the more volatility you experience. The lesson of leverage is this, assume that the worst imaginable outcome will occur and ask whether you can tolerate it. If the answer is no, then reduce your borrowing. In a typical life cycle, prior to adulthood we consume more than we produce. As we acquire education and training, we contribute more to society than it takes to support us. During this period, a prudent or fortunate investor will accumulate wealth from which to draw upon later as he ages and reduces his income from work. The 2008 collapse in housing prices was caused by unlimited unsound loans by highly leveraged borrowers. Leverage, easy money, and financial engineering brings a series of asset bubbles and threats to the stability of the financial system itself. When you buy something you don't really understand, it's not better or worse than throwing a dart into the stock market list. Even more valuable was that I learned at an early age to teach myself. Education builds software for your brain. Leverage, easy money, and financial engineering brings a series of asset bubbles and threats to the stability of the financial system itself. Hoaxes, frauds, manias, and other large-scale financial irrationalities have been with us from the beginnings of the markets in the 17th century, long before the internet. Gambling is a tax on ignorance. People often gamble because they think they can win, they're lucky, they have hunches, that sort of thing, whereas in fact, they're going to be remorselessly ground down over time. There are inefficiencies in the market, but they're not easy to demonstrate, and I think that needs to be done before one shifts money in that direction. Short-sighted things that people sometimes do for their individual self-interest don't tend to work out well in the long run. Casino gambling with a system where you have the edge is a wonderful teacher for elementary money management. 